the previous video, we took a look at how to format a call sheet. Now let's discover ways to customize it and send it out directly from within Yamdu. So let's just jump right into our saved call sheet from the last time. And we can actually access it in one of two ways. We can go into our shooting schedule and find the call sheet right here. And that'll take us directly to the draft call sheet. Or we can go into the call sheet section where we have all our drafts and scroll down to the one we were working on. And let's go ahead and select that. And since this call sheet is not marked final yet, um, we can still make changes to the document before we send it out. And as I already mentioned previously, we can actually customize everything on the call sheet simply by dragging and dropping elements on the template. To start off, we can click on the weather to make changes or adjust elements like the temperature unit into Celsius. We can also make sure that the weather forecast is up to date for the shooting day again, and we'll be able to see the highs and lows get updated. We can also change the icon if we need to, and just make sure that those changes get saved. Last time we covered how to adjust call times, but we can also add calls for user groups or individual users. So if you want a specific user, we can use the drop down and select, say, Natalie Farmer, and give her a time for nine o'clock and add a location like the office. Now she has her own crew call time. We can also do this for user groups. So let's say that construction needs to be present at six o'clock on set. And the same goes for filming locations. We can edit and choose to have the map visible or not visible on the call sheet. We can also zoom in or zoom out on the map. And we can really add any additional information here, which will then get stored for the next time. So if we choose to use this filming location in the future, that information will always be there. If we scroll down a little, we can add um, non-filming locations like hotels as well. So if we have a hotel in mind, we can type in a name or use the Google API to find the exact address that we're looking for. And now we have another filming location right here. We can always personalize this location a little more and just type in a specific name to make that change. Going down, we'll see all the scenes that's actually linked to the shooting schedule. But that doesn't mean we have to go back to the shooting schedule to make changes. We can just make them here by choosing a different set, clicking and adjusting times, descriptions, and casts, and so forth. We can also add notes or even delete scenes. And if we're missing anything, we can go into the settings to add more options to display on the call sheet. And here we have quick access to options like adding notes. So let's go ahead and include one. We can also give this a time frame by using the drop down menu, but we can always hide the start and end times if they aren't needed. And let's not choose the option to adjust the start time to the previous strip. Further down, we can add more scenes. And again, we have the option to add notes. And we can also see our content items. And below the character list is an option to add more elements. This will give us an overview of what we can add, like a plain text field or a crew list. And if we select that, we'll have the new element on the call sheet where again, we can edit settings and hide things like phone numbers, for instance, or exclude individual users from the list in general. After we hit save, we can also attach other files like script sides or even an external link that'll get added to the call sheet. Now we can set the mailing list. So if we click on the recipients list, we can add or remove those who will receive the call sheet. In this case, let's add the production crew, um, director's department, and 
we can also add units as well. But there are always options to select individual crew members if we scroll down below. Now we can actually store this mailing list for all future call sheets if we want. And if we do so, we can find them under here and just select it from the list. Next, let's just write a short message for our recipient and save it again. Now everything is saved. So the recipient, the message, the attached files, and once we're good to go, we can go ahead and click yes and finalize the call sheet. The next step is to send it out to all our recipients via email from directly within Yamdu. So we just need to click yes and the call sheet will be sent out to everyone. What happens next is that everyone will receive the call sheet as a PDF attachment and they'll need to confirm it in the email or from within the application. Once confirmed, we can see the sending report and view who has actually received it and we'll be able to see our own confirmation right here. So here we can also see some warnings for those uh, recipients without emails. And for stuff like this, as well as if anything else happens, we can resend the call sheet or even send it to some additional recipients. Going back to the call sheet overview, we'll see that the call sheet has now been finalized right up here. And as a last note, because this call sheet is set for tomorrow, now everyone will be able to see it on the dashboard like so. And if you're given a personal call time, you'll be able to see that information right here. Again, clicking on it will take you directly to the call sheet. And of course, you can also view it on your phone as well. And that was the second part of setting up your call sheet and sending it out to your recipients via Yamdu. We'll see you in the next video.